got Corey Davis on Titan Shift, Connor Sloan on Mono Green Tron, and we just gave you guys a taste of, of Tron versus Pox, Pox. but now we're going to see what it can do against another deck that's really not presenting a lot of like threats up front and disruption up front. So I'm not sure, like, what is the game plan for Tron facing off against Titan Shift? So it's basically just trying it's to untap race. this turn five and just win. It's so a race. So is, is he hoping for uh, a Karn in his Karn. opening hand? Yeah. You want Karn, um, you want to just be slamming a Karn to uh, trying your best to exile his lands, keep him off lands, and then potentially find a warm core engine and beat face that way. Exile a couple lands, maybe get Ugin, exile a couple more. Yeah. So. All right, so we're keeping and scrying to the top. Um, I'm not sure who's on the play. It looks like Corey maybe on the play. I, uh, the way he was shuffling around cards there. Yeah. Looks like. I, I really like the Titan Shift variant of the of the Scape Shift plan. It's a little mm -hmm. more like more going on there, like to to have a, a more, uh, more active win condition. Yeah. So. And we're going to get stomping grounds. Uh, Connor is going to be able to search up a turn three Tron, it looks like. I believe we have a different Tron land in hand and not just a... So yeah. Yep, we have yep. a tower in hand, and that is a mine in play. That yeah. is a mine. I'm horrible at all Connor's mismatching art. It's well, it. it's the antiquities, man. Like, all of it, It's funny to think that that was very common back uh, at that time that uh, magic cards had different art within the same set. I remember uh, Fallen Empires in particular was famous for that. Like four or five arts for some cards like in the Turak and that sort of thing. It's when I started playing. Oh yeah? Yeah, it was the first set, sadly for me, that I bought <laughs> in a store. I started playing in Kamigawa. That was eight. Uh, yeah. Eight? 2004? No, that was seven. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to guess that I've probably been playing Magic longer than you have been alive. 1997. Yes, I have. Success. We did it, team. Uh, so we have Scape Shift in hand. We don't have uh, anything to do with it. Or we don't have uh, any way of getting there this turn, though, unfortunately. And it looks like Connor might be able to just slam a Karn this turn. I believe we have an Ugin or a Karn in hand. And if it's a Karn, then um, I think Corey might be in for a world of hurt. We're going to untap draw. All right, there's Chromatic Star. Maybe a bit louder. Sorry, I, I think it was away from, the mic was away from my face. Uh, it does not look like uh, we Connor have. had in hand a, a card, although there is one that's right there now. All right, so now this puts uh, Corey under some pressure. He's, he knows that this is there. It was new. Okay, that's what I thought. We're going to play and crack to exile the graveyard and uh, play No Stone. No Stone's not going to do too much. Doesn't doesn't kill a... Uh, Valakut, so kills a Titan, but Corey's hand is looking like mono scape shift right now. I think we have two. So he, I think I see an additional land. Yeah, so he, let's say, search for tomorrow. So he's going to set himself up for next turn, but he knows the Karn's coming, so he doesn't probably want to try and roll anything else out. Mm -hmm. Unless he has something like a Steve here, some sort of Sack Tribe Elder, but didn't look like he did, so. He's trying to play around knowing that Connor's going to be able to get probably two of his lands. Mm -hmm. um, I guess his, his backup game plan is he's hoping that Connor doesn't have another threat behind that's going to put pressure on so yeah. he, that uh, Corey can rebuild. Yeah. Connor is likely to get at least one land um, this turn. Uh, if we, like... My biggest fear is Corey is if Connor just casts an Olamog, then I definitely just lose. Gets exiled two of my lands. I can't cast my because uh, I he did he does actually have a uh, Titan in hand that I didn't notice. So um, we're gonna exile probably the Valakut, keep him down on lands. Corey will fetch out another Stomping Grounds or another tap red source of some sort. Try and keep mountains high, uh, then likely an ETB search up a mountain 
and a Valakit. And, and be if, able to if our, bolt Karn, yeah. Yeah, and be able to bolt Karn, pending that our fourth land in our hand is a mountain. Or our sixth land in our hand, sorry. Ooh, we don't have Ooh. it. Oh, but this is actually better. Or not better, but this is actually pretty good. Uh, that's a blanking on the name, but it makes all lands you control all land types. So Yeah, all his lands are mountains now, so if he can go off, he's going to go off. Valakit triggers on itself. Um, looks like we're going to be smart about it. Just kill another land. Uh, especially seeing that Cord didn't play a land drop next turn, I would definitely be yeah, very Osar's going to take care of the enchantment. Uh, we don't really have too much going on. We have another O-Stone we can plop out and an Ugin in hand, so we, we'll probably play an Ugin next turn. Uh, we're going to keep up Ghost Quarter, though, just for obvious reasons. It doesn't matter too much, I don't think, right now, but um, definitely still not bad to, to play like this. And Corey's also got to think about how many mountains he has, yeah. and making sure that he retains enough, that if he manages to get an opening to go off, that he has enough gas to, to win the game. Which they typically, even if they have a lot of lands, I, I've seen Scape Ship be able to win, but... With these, uh, I'm blanking on the card name. If someone in chat wants to tell me the card name, please go ahead. Uh, but it, I know it makes all your basic lands, basic land types. Um, he's he's making Connor use land. those O stones by rolling that out. He's got the Titan behind. I don't. I would have just played out the Ugin there. I would just played out Ugin tick down personally. Prismatic Omen. There it is. Thank you, my good sir. Um, Maybe we can tick down. Yeah, die. I guess it would die if we he went fourth land. No, it wouldn't, because he wouldn't have the prismatic omen. What am I saying? Yeah, no, I would have just went Ugin there. He's got the ballista on too, so. Keeping the ghost quarter up. Again, like I said, gotta keep it up. It is great. I think Corey drew a land there. What a super guy. Exactly. Super guy. Four five two is a super guy. Thanks, Wolfen. All right, we're going to fetch, get a Cinder Glades coming to play, untap. It's not the pretty art. Should be the... Uh, you know, like the expedition the one? Or? No, the the open house expedition. Or not open house. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. The promo expedition. Like, that's a, the normal border like that, but it's an expedition. And we're going to play this Titan. We have five mountains out, so we're going to get to go search up a probably a mountain Valakit. Yeah, it's going to allow him to act... Either on the walking ballista or on, he's, he's going to hit the walking ballista with it, which seems the right call. He knows that he's still going to get pinged for two, but it clears the way. Yep. Um, this puts Corey in a decent position. I, I guess he doesn't know he's got Ugin behind, which is going to change some of the calculus. All right, we just drew uh, Sanctum of Ugin, so that's really that. I think that's a game ender. Yeah, that's gonna. That's <laughs> really really good now. I'm gonna ghost quarter your Valakut. Corey's going to go search up a forest, more than likely. Try and keep his density of mountains pretty high in his deck. Play Ugin. Uh, Sax Sanctum Trigger. Go get a... I just get a Ulamog. 100%. Yep, there it is. I just get a Ulamog. We got mana cast Ulamog. We get a Ulamog. Um... You believe he should have searched for two Valakits? Uh, I think you're right. I, d I do actually think you're right on that. We're going to tick down s tick down six, put Ugin to one. Um, this is... I Cor think Corey's got Scape Shift in his hand, so he's, he's he going to go off with it. If he has the man or the... If he has the mountains in his deck for it, which I imagine he does. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think we had out. And I think the deck plays 16. No, not 16. No, we had... Six out. And oh, here, exactly here's the moment of truth. 13, 13 sorry. But even with all this hate from Connor, I think uh, Corey, it does look like Corey still got there. Yeah. Yep, there's there six. There it is. There is 1836 damage point at Connor Sloan's face. And that's the game. Through two O stones, a Karn, and an, and Ugin. an Ugin. That's impressive. Just keep grinding. Look at all those lands in his exile pile. Did not matter. 
Yeah, it's interesting side. I mean, obviously both these decks, something they're always looking out for in sideboards again, against most other opponents is going to be Blood Moon. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously a card neither of them are, are fearing in this instance. So if you're Connor, what's your plan with Tron against Scape Shift Game 2? If I'm Corey? If you're Connor, you're playing Corey. Oh. You're on Tron. Oh. You're going up against Titan Shift. What, what's the plan? I, again, I'm going to I reiterate, this is a matchup where it's just a race. Let me look at some Tron. This might actually be his, uh, no, this is Little Rock. I was going to say, this actually might be his worst. Yeah, there's, no, there's no Urza's factory in there, so okay. that is not Connor Sloan. Um, let's see. Surgical Extraction's definitely in. Thought Knots here? Eh. Thought Knots here seems really mediocre. Um, it doesn't seem horrible, but it just doesn't seem right to me. Yeah, I mean, if okay, I guess, like, what would you take out to put in Thought Knots here? So, I mean, Walking Ballista is probably your least valuable mm. threat card. Yeah, because anything you want to ping in this, he can just sack. Like, the only creatures he really has, I don't imagine Corey brings in Hornet Queens or anything like that. So I think just cutting, like, Walking Ballistas is really, like, Walking Ballistas, maybe, maybe Nature's Claim, just to give you life. Yeah, because that could be very, just resolving that on one of, on your Chromatic Star yeah. could get you out of getting killed. Underrated, underrated life gain spell, Nature's Claim, you cast it on your own Chromatic Star or even something else that you don't really need and gain yourself some life. Keep yourself I, alive. I think Thought Knots here is worth trying to find a way to bring in because it is a way to do some kind of hand attack to take the actual scape shift out of their hand. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, otherwise, there's really not much you have in the way of game. Warping Whale, that's another option. I don't know if Connor has that in his sideboard. Well, um, Surgical Extraction essentially stops scape shift pending that you're able to get a Valakit, which is not very likely, granted, if Corey is playing smart. But sometimes you can get there with that. Um, hey, what what in Connor's deck would put a land in the graveyard? Like you'd exile things. You'd exile a Valakit with with, uh, with Karn. I'm not sure there's something that would put it in the graveyard. Ghost Quarter. Ghost Quarter, okay. It's a Ghost Quarter first game, so that... Yeah, Warping Whale, actually, if he has Warping Whales in the sideboard. That's also a very good card. Do you know all the modes on Warping Whale? I only know the, the one that always gets cast on me, which is one we're referencing to use it as a counterspell. So. It's create a 1-1 one, one Eldrazi Scion token. Oh, that sack that sack. for some colorless. Sack for colorless. It Hey, it pumps out turn three... Turn, yeah, turn three thought not seers sometimes win. Um, if you don't have Tron lands, yeah, there it is. Exile target creature with power or toughness one or less. That one I always get wrong. I always think it's just toughness because it's been cast so many times on my flicker list. I can't <laughs> even count. Played taxes for a really long time and card. I hate it. How has got another tower in his hand? Then you think of mine. I don't know if he's got a power plant. Why does he spend a search for his canter? Uh, well, we drew Ancient Stirrings or Sylvan Scrying. I can't tell. I think it was a Sylvan Scrying. We'll cast Ancient Stirrings, though. Take a look at the Power Plant. O-Stone. Yeah, he the needs plant. the Power Plant, yeah. Play the plant. Pass the turn. Did you say that was a search for Escanta? Search for tomorrow. Yeah. Did I say search for Escanta? <laughs> you did. Yeah. Both are good. Although, yeah. if you could play a one-mana search for Escanta, that would be better. Well, yeah, Whale Countering Scape Shift is... There's Steve. I, would, I wouldn't say you ever want to counter the ramp, but you basically almost always exclusively want to counter the scape shift. Turn three, Karn. Hit the land. That's what you want. And we're going to have to fight through this. Definitely not sacking Steve. Definitely pressuring Karn so we can um, keep him down to two. Oh, wow. Really? He's going to sack I'd, Steve. I'd hit it down to two. Yeah, so he couldn't get a second land with it. Mm. He'd have to start going after Unless the ramp first. Bolt in hand, but I imagine you take out bolts if you're Corey. What a game. Hey, man. 
We wanted to put something, put someone on. Connor recently had a had a good good showing, and we wanted to give him a chance. I still think it's interesting. I know this is the most interactive game of Magic, but it is still an interesting strategic interaction in yeah. the sense that these are two decks that have to come up with innovative ways of using the tools at their disposal to either fight through disruption or disrupt their opponent mm -hmm. within the kind of the non-standard ways to want to apply. This is also our undefeated table, which we don't often put on. Like, I almost honestly never am able to get the undefeated table on. All right, we're in a far seek. We don't, doesn't look like Corey had a land drop for turn because he has a second far seek in hand, and that kind of is super unfortunate. This would have been a, a really good start from Corey had Connor not just been able to assemble turn three Tron there. Uh, we would have been able to, we'd be at five lands and six lands right now because we would have been able to car cast this other far seek in our hand. Yeah, he's going after his hand at this point, not going after another land because he sees that. Exile Explorer, it doesn't have to be under Karn. It's not a permanent, so you don't care about that with Karn. The, um, you know, the, the Connor realizes at this point that even if, if Corey untaps, he's not going to be able to do anything on that turn, so he might as well take something out of his hand. Yeah. We're probably going to put, put a fake counter on Karn here and then uh, to try and protect against a potential incoming... Titan, that's the word. He's going to have mana for it, I mean, momentarily, but Connor's just going to keep fixing his wagon with the Karn, and there's there's not a whole lot he's going to be able to do about it, losing it one land every other turn at a minimum. Yep, it's, it's definitely really rough. Like, the only thing I think that could maybe happen is <sighs> we draw... We have Summoner's Pact in hand, I believe. If we draw... Titan, and then uh, Connor just blows a throw stone. Never mind. That doesn't even save us right now. I'm going to eat another land. Probably stomping ground. Yep. Tick down on your stomping ground. And does Connor actually have like a threat to win the game with? This is a repeat of our last <laughs> Tron matchup. He can uh, oh, dominate with Karn, but he can't actually win with it. All right. So we're, we're going to attack his uh, Karn. Yeah, he's finally following your advice. Not sacrificing Steve. Yeah, I think I think that uh, Corey should have pressured Karn there, put him to two, so that way he would have had to tick up. We have cards that we don't really need, like the Explorer, so we would have been fine just discarding. And it would definitely keep Karn a little lower. So now Connor's definitely going to tick him up and have to deal with the fact that Steve's are going to continue to ping Con uh, Karn down. But, oh, no, he's... He's going to just take land and let it go? I, I think this is perfectly fine. Like, we're just keeping keeping Corey down, keeping him off lands. Uh, we have – we need a green source, though. We're looking a little, a little, a little rough here. Well, he's got an Ancient Sturge in his hand. You can't remove it. I think it's Sylvan Scrying, too. Get him, Steve. Says Dig Dug 420. <laughs> well, Steve went and got a couple lands. Corey's still trying to fight through this. All right, so we need a land here. I don't think that was a... Oh, no, it is land. It's a Cinderglade. All right, so we're going to play the Cinderglade. Summoner's Pack, go get a Titan. Titan dies. <laughs> we're sad. Although there's plenty of lands in play, so Corey's life on a number of different avenues at that point. Um, This isn't like Amulet Titan, where even with this... Uh, this O stone, we could maybe like uh, get Teleria West or something. Unfortunately, but we can. I think we go get and play Titan, and then just let it blow up and get probably double. We know Connor doesn't have anything. We're pretty certain Connor doesn't have anything. Is there a scape shift? I don't. Uh, yeah, I think that second card is scape shift. All right, so he's gonna. Go and get a Titan. Can Steve scape shift when? Yeah, I, I guess that's a line. That's a weird line. Uh, looks like that's the line he's gonna take. All right. So Connor is going or Corey is going to cast Steve, sack Steve, probably go get a forest, cast scape shift, and then put Connor to 
and just, and just hope the top deck two something he can do to get a mountain or yeah. a mountain. Which we have a Farseek, I think? No. No way. No, we're not paying. We're not casting this. Interesting. All right. So, so now we need now we need another land off the top. And it has to be a green source. Does he have the ramp in hand? Okay. But he has to pay for uh he has to pay for pack now. Yeah, so he is paying for pact. Yeah. So we're drawing that's not ramp, that's a red spell. I think it's a lightning axe or something. Yeah, he's paying it. Flame slash, that's it. So Connor's got all of the Tron lands he could possibly need and a handful of green cards from the sand. Uh, from well, Kill. we just drew the uh, the enchantment, the whatever it's called. We talked about this earlier, and I, again, it's horrible. Prismatic Omen, that's it. We got it. I fi figured it out. All right, we just drew Prismatic Omen, which I think just when does... There's an O-Stone out, so he could pop the O-Stone. Oh, never mind. And, right. and make that irrelevant. I think uh, I think I'd still play out the prismatic. I mean, it forces the issue. It does. I mean, it, Corey is in a is in good shape to do something. He just has to find the right line. Because once, so Connor has to pop it in response to the scape shift. He can't let the scape shift resolve or right or he dies. Or no, wait, no, he doesn't because he can do it with all the triggers on the stack, and then with all the triggers on the stack, you pop it. Um, Pending that Corey didn't get, if, yeah, if, if, if if Corey doesn't get actual mountains, and if Corey gets like, um, I think it's too if late. If Corey then, gets like it? fetch lands and stuff instead of getting mountains, like I don't know, then he has to pop. If he pops the O stone, then he doesn't take damage. But because uh, Valakut checks on resolution, it doesn't check on. Oh, okay. Or it doesn't like deal damage on the stack. I found that out. Um, why did he get Steve? Uh, he got Steve because any ramp spell made it to where he would just kill Cor Connor. No, it checks it. Yeah, tr on trigger and resolution technically. Okay, you're right, Mr. Matthew Manier, but. Valakut right, damage <laughs> checks on resolution. It's like uh, Pelt Collector triggers. Yeah. Like It has to be bigger both uh, at the beginning and the end. Oh, of time is a ramp. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Titan Lair Slayer was a bit aggressive with that pack. Yeah, I think I think so, too. Um, this hand has turned out pretty pretty god-awful, if I'm to be honest. Um, <laughs> Connor true <drew> Olmach. <laughs> All right, yeah, Connor just won the game now. Yeah. Uh, can, does it, did any float? I don't think he cast it. I think we should have just forced the issue with Pact and gotten the Titan and then have him pop the O-Stone. <sighs> but hindsight's 40-40. Hindsight's 40, hindsight's 20-20. Right, so Connor's actually used the floating green. He did have one floating net. Yeah. It was green. This game is weird. I know Valakin half and how it works. It seems rather dirtle. Yeah, it is. Kind of. I think Connor's in a weird spot because I don't think he's left himself the option to cast Ulmog right now. Um, we haven't, but I still like we definitely have another turn. He's at six mana, and we're at twenty life still. He has to have ramp. Like he has to have green source ramp spell. Exactly, green source two mana ramp spell. Which, I mean, he's already cast, I think, two Farseek, hasn't he? Yeah, he's already cast two Farseek, Exiled and Explorer, cast two or three, three Steve, four yeah. Steve. Four yeah, Steve. How many more does he have? Oh, oh, does it, I'm kind of looking at his hand there for a second. I couldn't see. There was a green spell, but I don't know if he I has think it. we've drawn, like, two or three Scape Shift. Yeah, he also got a Mountain, so a Forest will see. I think he should have just been getting Forest, personally. Like, you're... Relying on your green source, you don't care about red sources until you get scape shift. So this is it for Corey. He has to do something now. Um, he, yeah, Ulmog's coming behind. 
If he has land, he can scapeshift for 18. But Stone, oh yeah, no, he can. Okay, sorry, yeah. Right now he can can scapeshift for 18, but Stone does cancel it. Um, he scapeshift. I think oh, come on, sir. We're looking at World Breaker. World Breaker does not have Annihilator, so we don't care about Annihilator or anything. Thank the Lord for World Breaker not having Annihilator. Yeah, I think uh, I think there were some definitely some lines that were misplayed in this matchup. But we're gonna go to game three probably and uh, figure it out. Uh, we're gonna draw, and then we're gonna cast Mulmog. And that will be that. And that will be that will just be that. Map. Oh, uh, we're gonna get <laughs> Sanctum Mavugan to rub it in. I mean, Connor's going for the maximum downside protection. I get it, just in case. I mean, yeah, he's looking at Corey with a handful of cards over there. Like, yeah. what, you know, not having really done anything the last two turns. Two, four, six, seven, ten. Cast in the log. Sanctum of Ugin trigger. Sanctum of Ugin says whenever you He's cast He's taking eight, the green sources, so... Cast a colorless spell, CMC 7 or less, or 7 or greater, you get to search your card for a creature card. Or yeah, a colorless we bring in the card. Thought Nuts here. Yeah, we did bring in the Thought Nuts here. Look at that. We get to cast this Thought Nuts here. Even take a look at Corey's hand. And, um... Just, just win. <laughs> we just get to win. Wait, we can... Free scape shifts. Oh, wait, Flame Slash and a Sorcery, isn't it? Yeah. Free scape shifts. Or Flame Slash. Flame Slash is a Sorcery, isn't it? Right? I'm assuming so. Yeah. Based off the fact that I didn't cast it in response. I'm not super familiar with the card. I never played with it, so... Uh, you had two seeds on the field. It was just getting below 18 before fetching any cape. Yeah, I don't know. There, there... Like I said, there were definitely some lines that were probably could have been played better, but oh well. We're going to go to game three, and uh, like I said, it's a race usually, but that was a really slow race. It was. That was a that was a race where a player decided to take a bathroom break in the middle, <laughs> maybe <laughs> watch his sh stories, and then figure it out. Yeah, Connor, um, Connor had... I think they should take escape shift. Uh, a, stu a stupid fast start, and then got nothing behind except cards he could not cast. So it gave Co uh, Corey all the chance that he could he could need to you to catch up. You play four color shift walking. You mean? Do you mean bring delight? Do you mean you play bring delight, like Mr. Robert Meadows? Hey, you played that deck. I played that deck. I wasn't very good at it. I punted super hard against you, and I'm still salty. About <laughs> it. I'm just glad that I'm just glad that you taught you mentioned it. I remember you mentioning that Robert was going to uh, talk trash about how you punted, and then sure enough, I don't know if you ever listened, but uh, he followed through on your uh, on your expectation. Um, and I think Robert's listening, so <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> In game three, Corey will be on the play. I think you know he's just going to try and accelerate, as he said, as fast as possible in the race. Doesn't really have a, it seems like a reliable way to do much about Connor's uh, threats, except get there and be able to, to interact with them through Valica triggers or with Titan, of course. It doesn't doesn't uh, help that all of Mr. Meadows' Bring the Light Scape Shift deck is in fact in German. And I did tell uh, I did tell Meadows that if he if he played it, he needed to start pronouncing all of the German cards, but like with a really like guttural German accent to like you know s as sinister as possible. Well, so I hate. I, I hate and love the German language. It's <laughs> let's just shove all of our words together to make one super word. And my last name is Schuster. I assure you, I have a number of thoughts on the German language. This is Cincinnati for you. Yeah, it's Cincinnati. I don't know for anybody out there in uh, in the internet land who is 
following along with us, uh, Cincinnati is very well known for having a high density of German immigration and yeah. ancestry in many of its residents. Very pretty German architecture. Yes. Uh, hopefully next round you can see other decks other than Tron and Schiff. Well, yeah, we'll get you something else on. on. Uh, usually our fourth round is whoever doesn't split. But uh, we'll get some, maybe get some good, good matchup going. Maybe some, I don't know, something. We'll figure something out. I know I'm in the minority, but I still find this fascinating. It's, these it's these decks trying to find a way to deal with each other is is the sort of, you know, it's next level thinking. Bring delight is easy. Depending on. Bring delight is kind of easy. I'm just bad at magic. I sack forests and get forests. I speak for the trees. Alright, man. Mulligan. Corey's keeping it. He's Hey Robert, did you know that uh you should definitely start your project instead? I have homework tonight, and I have a lab due tomorrow that I still haven't started, so I shouldn't talk. And I'm here instead. What are you studying, Luke? Huh? What are you studying? Uh, biology. Mm. Yeah, I want to die. <laughs> um, I'm just in Tell me organic, organic chem right now, and I just hate it. Uh, so spend a search for Azkanta, play a chromatic sphere. Does Grafdigger's Gage do anything against shift? I don't remember the exact wording on the card. No. Short answer, no. It does absolutely nothing. Um, you know, um, what's the amount of carbon found in cobalt? Uh, none. None. Isn't cobalt its own element? Yeah. I was going to say, even I know that, and I, I, don't, I have a master's in business. <laughs> I've stayed as far away from the chem lab as I could. Yeah. Uh, creatures can't play from graveyards or libraries, and players can't cast cards from their graveyards. Is, is the inner or the wording on? So I think that uh, Connor top decked the mine he needed from that oh, uh, I get, star. I get your OG opt collection. How many OG ops is that? Is that like seven? Seven hundred? I said Ascanta again. Shut up. <laughs> search for tomorrow. <laughs> I play search for Ascanta too much. Uh, what are you playing, Standard? In standard, nothing right now. I had mono blue, but uh, Robert Meadows stole it. He still has it. Give me back my deck, Robert. I'm Robert hashtag Robert Meadows, real villain. So Corey is ramping as hard as he possibly can. I think he drew an explorer. Is that an explorer? Yeah, I see an explorer in his hand. And I think he's casting it, yeah. Gonna draw. Um, yeah, so we're gonna ca hard cast a search for tomorrow. So Corey's in position. He can do something here if he's able to untap, but Connor does have turn three Tron. I have not had a good look to see what kind of threats he has behind. Oh, there's a card. Yeah, yeah there's a card in there. So that's not good. And Corey's uh, off to the best start he possibly can, but Connor top deck that. Uh, that mine he's sitting on on that star, so he's good. And there's yeah. the mine, and there's the carn, and there's the tick down on a land. Probably the stomping ground. Yep. Might as well take the shock. Corey is untapped now with one short of what he was hoping for. <laughs> they asked me for my 401k and asked where I wanted to put it to. I said OG ops. <laughs> nice. As somebody who has a, a, a master's business administration with a focus in investment management, uh, I feel I'm qualified enough to say that might not have been the wisest possible investment for your 401k. Possibly not the wisest. Um, we're going to cast this. Do we have a fourth land? Or are we going to play like a 4-4 four, four for 4 in the form of obstinate bailoff? Or Steve. I don't know. Or are we getting Steve? Oh, yeah, he's got We're Steve in his Steve. hand again. There it is. We're doing it. We're getting Steve. Uh, Narset Reversal goes infinite with Morphos and Active Ascension. Yes, we went over this last week, Walken. We went over this last week. I, I, I'm I, not going to claim to discover it, but I was studying for my 
organic chemistry exam when that car got spoiled and I came up with it on the spot and then I proceeded to bang my head into a textbook for eight hours. And I really you know thirty percent of my exam. Ooh. But you know, they probably grade that on a curve, right? Yeah, but so not, what was not a curvy enough. I was to say it was like it's like S C plus. I had an options and futures uh, class where I had to do uh, three period option trees by hand, and I got a 65 on it, and it was a B. So that felt good. I felt like I earned that B. <laughs> My hand was cramped for like three days later. All right, so thought knots here. I mean, it's all happening for Connor on his side of the table. I don't see how Corey comes back. It's going to take something from his hand. Bob greater than Steve. It takes the flame slash that was sitting in there. Oh, thank you, Tentacule23, for the 4X sub, the fourth month in a row. You entered yourself into our April subscriber only giveaway, which we have going on right now. We are probably at 20 subs already, I imagine. I don't know if we are really, but I'm going to guess we are. And we're going to win one Rishadon port once we hit 20, two if we hit 30, three if we hit 40, and all three. Plus a foil mandible if we hit 50. So keep on subbing. Sub to us all you can. You are automatically entered if you sub. It will happen on <laughs> May 1st. And that's when we'll choose winners. Yeah. Yes, that is true, Volk Smash. You either know your stuff or you don't. And unfortunately, I do not know my stuff that well, clearly. I just don't understand synthesis. Like, I understand, like, that was 40 points on the exam. And I just, I can't do synthesis. I'm so bad at working backwards from, like, a product to my reactants. I just can't do it. So Connor's continuing just to roll out the hits. I see another thought knots here in his hand. I don't know what Corey's got left, if anything, so he may just hold on to that. But uh, this feels pretty over right now. Yeah, um, we're ticking down on lands. Uh, Corey can top deck a Ugin. HBR is the answer to everything. If you're doing lab work, it is apparent, like according to my under a Grenard reagent. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the H2 palladium and HBO3. No, no, H2SO4, right? Yeah. Connor um, has played World Breakers. It's his. It's coming to a close. Good night, sweet prince. Yeah, that that that's that's what it is according to all of my friends who are in like. Um, graduate research is HBR and Grenard reagents are, are the answer to just about everything. But uh, they are unfortunately not the answer in uh, organic chem one and on the exam. They're also not the answer for Corey's <laughs> ability to keep up with Connor. They are not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, he's, he's trying. He explored. He's trying to keep his... He's got Valakit. I mean, he's so much that's in front right now of uh, of them that it's really going to matter. Ghost Quarter is going to take Valakit out. Surgical. Oh, surgical Valakit. I mean. Alright. I think uh, by God this man had a family. This is, this is this is he's taking them apart. And Connor's car should burn test to see the caloric content in Connor's Karn. That's uh, some nice alliteration. Caloric content in Connor's car. Scoop, please. <laughs> I feel that. Yeah, I, I, I think... Uh, this feels very over. <laughs> this feels really over at this point. I appreciate Corey's uh, selection of beta lands there, though. Mm -hmm. Basic beta basics. It's a man of sophistication. <laughs> Corey's got him right where he wants him. Exactly. How you do it? We're gonna exile Corey's land. What you gonna do, Corey? Huh? You gonna escape shift? I'm gonna escape shift and sack all my lands if I top deck escape shift. Uh, top deck escape shift. All, right. all right, there's the handshake right. and the concede. 